hello hello welcome back thank you so much for joining me so in today's video I of course am going to be talking about Aladdin <laughs> I had to whip out my Aladdin Jasmine ears for this video I of course am going to be trying out and playing with the new Mac and Aladdin collaboration you know how much I love a themed collection so this was right up my alley. I am a massive Disney fan. I love everything Disney, and being the 90s kid that I am, I am especially fond of the animation renaissance films from the early 1990s. Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and Little Mermaid are my three favorite Disney films of all time. My three favorite princesses come from those films. Jasmine is awesome. Belle and Ariel are amazing. So when I saw that in, uh, I don't know, honor? <laughs> but in um, coordinated marketing, the coordinated marketing plan that Disney has for the release of the new live action Aladdin film, they were doing this, they were releasing this collaboration with Mac. I knew I had to pick it up. So I did pick up the entire collection when it launched. I have now tried everything out. I have everything currently on my face. So if you want to hear my thoughts about this new collection, whether it's worth it, all that fun stuff, then keep on watching. <laughs> Okay, we're here. I'm gonna take these ears off. They're giving me a little bit of a headache. <laughs> I do love these ears because you can switch out the bow to be whatever you want. Um, so these, of course, are my Aladdin-inspired ears, which I adore. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start talking about this makeup because that's why you're here, not here to listen to me talk about how much I love Disney. So the first thing we have in this collection, this is the Nine Pan Eyeshadow Palette. This is called the Princess Jasmine Palette, which I do really like. Um, I enjoy, okay, so my first reaction to this was, oh my goodness, it is so tiny. <laughs> I have never seen a MAC nine pan eyeshadow palette in person. I have only ever seen pictures of them. And online and in those pictures, I thought they would be bigger. My mental idea of what a nine pan palette from MAC would look like. I thought it would be the same as like the nine pan eyeshadow palettes that ColourPop does, which, oh, I had one, but they're much larger than this. Like they'd probably be about, I don't know, one and a half this t size of this. This is the, s I was so shocked when I got this and I was like, where's the eyeshadow palette? They forgot to put it in the bag. Like they forgot my order. Where's the eyeshadow? And then I was like, oh, it's, it's just this. This is the same size palette as we have as the Patrick Star collab, which is, this, it just blows my mind that this could be the same size, but Patrick Star was four pans and this is nine. It just, mm. Yeah, it really surprised me. Really, really surprised me. And kind of made me a little bit mad as well because this is kind of pricey. Yeah, you get 5.8 grams in here, which for an eyeshadow palette is not a lot. And this is as expensive as some of my like full-size palettes. Um, so I was very, very surprised <laughs> by how small this was and the price. <laughs> I was like, oh, Mac. Okay, like I, hmm, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. But all that aside, I do think these shadows are really, really pretty, and I like the theming. It is overall fairly cool toned, and you do get a, a nice mixture, I think, of mattes as well as shimmers. I personally am very drawn to like purpley tone colors, so for me, I thought this palette was really, really attractive, and I thought it was really pretty. So in this palette, we do have the shades Riff Raff, Rags to Riches, No Ordinary Lamp, Princess Jasmine, Agrabah, Abu, Creative Copper, Live the Genie Life, and Shadowy Lady. This limited edition eyeshadow palette in nine smoky metallic and desert shades, highly pigmented powder, applies evenly and blends well to use wet or dry. Transformed and specially designed opulent packaging inspired by the rich patterns and vibrant hues of Agrabah. 
So in general, I do quite like this palette, and of course I am wearing it on my eye today, but that is not the only thing I have on my eyes. I also have this guy on my eyes, which is a pigment from part of the collection. So this is in the shade Rose, which is that an existing shade that MAC has for their pigments? The name suggests that I feel like it might be, but I don't 100% know. This highly concentrated loose powder in a sparkly copper rose shade create a subtle wash of color or an intense effect. So yes, this is in the shade Rose, which is supposed to be a copper rose kind of like shift shade. So it kind of has like a pink base, but then it shifts to like this coppery gold color, which I think is really, really pretty. So I am, I did actually end up wearing both of these on my eyes. So for my eyeshadow look that I did today, of course I started by priming my eyelids using my MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the color Soft Ochre. After that, I went ahead into the matte brown shade called a Riff Raff and using a blending brush, put this into the crease and then a little bit over the brow bone. I next took the shade No Ordinary Lamp, which is the light matte pink shade, and I buffed this onto the brow bone. And then next went into Shadowy Lady, which is the matte dark purple shade, and put this on the outer corner to deepen up the eye and kind of smoke things out a little bit. After finishing up with the matte, I alternated between the first two shades, the Riff Raff and No Ordinary Lamp, just to kind of continue to blend and buff this eye look. After that, I took some glitter glue, tapped this on the lid, and went into the loose pigment called Rose from this collection. And I tapped a little bit of this pigment out and then using a brush that I also, I would then wet with a little bit of Fix Plus, I went ahead and applied this all over my eyelid. To blend it a little bit, I used the dark purple kind of shimmery shade called Abu and tapped that onto the outer third of my eye to kind of blend the metallic pigment in with the darker shade. And then of course went back into Shadowy Lady to again, deepen and blend everything together. Then went ahead and finished up the rest of my makeup and then came back to finish up the eye look. So I came back after finishing my makeup and started out using Riff Raff and just smudged that underneath the entire lower lash line. Then I took just the edge of a flat packing brush and went into the shade Agraba and drug this underneath the lower lash line just to add a little of that extra like purple shimmer that I had going on the upper lash line into the lower lash line. After that, I took a flat definer brush and went into Shadowy Lady and stamped this on the lower lash line, just on the outer portion, and then connected it to what I had going on on the upper lash line. I tried using the shade Princess Jasmine on the inner corner, but it just wasn't having the effect that I really wanted for a bright pop of inner corner highlight. So then I went into Rags to Riches to highlight the inner corner as well as the brow bone. To finish up the look, I used the Kajal eyeliner that came with this collection in the shade Graph Black and went ahead and lined my upper lash line and as well as placing this on the inner waterline. Threw on a little mascara and that was it for this eyeshadow look. So in general, I did really like this shade that I started with. This is Riff Raff. <laughs> uh, I did like that and I think it put a nice base. I didn't really use too many of these shimmers all over my lid. I did have... I. That one was really nice, as well as this like pink shade that is No Ordinary Lamp. I think that one was a lot more pigmented than I was anticipating from the swatches. The other matte shadow, this one down here, Shadowy Lady, I was not as pleased with this shadow. You know, they say that purples are not supposed to, they're not really the easiest to formulate, but I just was... Mm, I wasn't mad at the shadow. I just felt like it could have been a little bit easier with which to work. It's a little bit dry um, of a formula compared to the others, and I just felt like the way it adhered to the eyelid, I really, really had to take my time blending it to make sure that it looked good, if that makes sense. <laughs> The other shadow that I was not super pleased with was this guy here. This is the shade Abu, this purple shade, and it just... Mm, I had some issues, so I tried to apply this to the outer portion, like the outer third of my eye, just to blend where I put Shadowy Lady and, you know, the pigment down. And I just really, at first, felt like nothing was happening when I was going in with a boo. I really had to try to pack that on with a flat synthetic brush, like quite aggressively, in order to build up the color. And then when it came to trying to, like, create the fade between, you know, where I had the pigment and the dark shadow and... It just, it wasn't working or performing the way that I really wanted a shadow to 
work. Now, this probably would be beautiful all over the lid, but I already, I mean, I was applying it on top of like other shadows and kind of trying to just do like that little blend and that just wasn't working the way that I wanted. Um, and so then I went into Shadowy Lady and tried to, again, build up that color and create that like kind of fade into smoky. And it wasn't really working very well either. I just had a lot of difficulty building up the, the dark color on the outer portion of my eye. That being said, I am very pleased with how my eyeshadow look came out, came out today. I think it is really, really beautiful. I think I want to play with this palette a little bit more. I'm not sure how versatile it would be, but I, I, in general, I really like this. What I was really excited to see, because I, in my the initial like kind of press photos that I was seeing released for this collection, I didn't realize that there was actually going to be a pigment as part of this collection, and I adore the MAC pigments. I really, really enjoy working with them. I like them. And this is a really gorgeous color. So for me, this pigment kind of saved this eyeshadow palette that I was having some issues with. In general, I was, I'm happy with this eyeshadow palette. I like it. I'm glad that I have it in my collection, um, especially because like the packaging. So often you know what you're getting into with a MAC shadow. You know the quality, you know how it's gonna perform. And these in general, I just felt like were a little less than, than a lot of the MAC shadows that I've had. So what saved the eyeshadow look, I think, is this pigment. However, I did look it up and Rose is not a new shade. It is an existing pigment shade that MAC already sells. It's just in special edition packaging and it's $2 more. <laughs> this is $24 where the standard pigments from MAC are 22. So while I love this pigment and I think it was really great, um, it's not necessary to get it in the special edition packaging. Two extra dollars for some paint. That's a bit much. That's a bit much. But oh well. Oh well. I'm not bitter or anything. <laughs> Overall, I am very happy with the way that my eyeshadow look came out. So once I finished with the eyeshadows, I went ahead and used the eyeliner, which I also, I don't know how it slipped past me, but I did not know was part of this collection. So this packaging, I do love... The packaging. I have to say, I do really, really love the attention to detail with the packaging. I think it's beautiful. And then on the actual eyeliner, it has peacock feathers on it. It's beautiful. This is another item that I didn't think was quite so necessary, and it's also not a new special item. It is just a black eyeliner. It's one of the MAC Kajal, um, you know, kind of eyeliners. It's black. And it's very creamy. Um, I did have a little bit of difficulty. I didn't have difficulty working with this, but I did notice a little bit of burning. And now this has completely disappeared from my inner waterline. Maybe I shouldn't have used it in my inner waterline, but I don't know, it's an eyeliner. Like it should be, it, it, it should work, right? <laughs> I was almost trying to consider doing like a wing and then like doing a little like mini inner corner wing, but this eyeliner is not really made for that. It's very creamy and it's a little bit thick when you do swatch it. Um, yeah, even like if you're trying to draw a thin line, it's, it's a little bit tricky and it did kind of tug on my eyelid. So I had a hard time. I started trying to do a wing on this, on this side. I started trying to do a wing on this side and it just, I could tell it was not gonna work out. So I was like, oh, that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll scrap the wing idea and just kind of go for like a smudgy kind of coal eyeliner look. And it didn't really work out. And also my eyes started burning. So <laughs> I didn't put more on. I was going to do a lot more eyeliner on the lower lash line to kind of give that sort of like Arabian inspired makeup look with the really heavy eyeliner but my eyes started burning and so I just was like, you know what, I'm gonna call it good <laughs> and I'm just gonna stop here. So this is another item that I think I would probably pass on. It's it's not special to this collection. They just, it's cute packaging, I'm not gonna lie, it is. Yeah, it was not, not a pleasant experience with this guy, so yeah. <laughs> So anyways, that's what I did for my eyes. Um, now I want to talk about the, the two items in this collection that I was most excited about. They call these powder blushes, which confused me. But then I did a little more research and it turns out that MAC does this a lot. <laughs> and if it is the same like base formula, even if they use different pigments or like maybe they'll add shimmers. And so 
in essence, it's really like this collection has a bronzer and a highlighter, but they're both called blushes because the base formula from MAC is the same. And so when it comes to like naming their products and what they call them, they call them both blushes. But really, in actuality, this collection has a highlighter. This is in the shade Always One Jump Ahead, One Jump Ahead of the Bread Lines, and a bronzer, which is Your Wish Is My Command. Uh, these are both great. So they're in the same, they're in the traditional like MAC packaging, but gold and it says Aladdin on them. So I went ahead and used the bronzer one, oh, your wish is my command first. This bronzer is actually very pigmented. Online, I was a little bit concerned looking at pictures, but then once I got it in person, I was like, oh yeah, I think this bronzer is actually going to work. And I feel like this could actually work for a variety of skin tones. Now I first went in and applied this and went in. I. I went in a little too heavy because looking at it in the pan, I was like, hmm, yeah, it looks dark, but they never, they always look darker in the pan. So I went in with quite a heavy hand and was shocked at first. I was like, oh my goodness. But it actually blends out really, really well. And I think the tone of this is quite nice. I think this has kind of maybe a little bit of a red undertone in this bronzer because when I was applying it, I think it did provide quite a bit of warmth and, you know, sun. It, was, it looked like I had actually got outside. It just looked very naturally bronzed and warm. And I did like that. I really, really did enjoy this bronzer. The other product that we have is always one jump ahead, which is a highlighter. Now this is a really gorgeous gold based highlighter. And now this is not as intense of a highlighter as I would have thought. It's not like a MAC, like baked mineralized skin finish, which have that kind of like more of a glittery or really bright metallic look. It kind of reminds me a little bit more of the MAC kind of opalescent face powder in which it has this really gorgeous highlight. I mean, you can see it on there. It is very bright. It is very highlighty, but it doesn't have any kind of like shimmer or anything to it. It is just like a pure metallic highlight that actually goes on and melts into the skin, which in all honesty, I, I mean, I love a blinding highlight. I love one that is like very in your face. I even don't mind a little glitter in my highlight. I think that's a lot of fun because glitter and sparkle, I don't think you can go wrong with them, but the most quote unquote natural looking highlight, I think, in my opinion, is the ones that kind of blend into your skin and you can't really tell where it begins or ends because it's just really seamless and it, has, it feels like it's just melted into your skin. And that's what this highlighter actually does. There is a little bit of a gold undertone in this highlighter, which for my skin tone, I think is really flattering. At first I was afraid that this might be a little bit light, but when you actually start applying it or if you build up the color a little bit, I think it actually works. So once again, I think the, the versatility of this color for different skin tones, I think is really there. So in these two, the bronzer and the highlighter, I feel like this collection in my eyes was redeemed. While I was let down and disappointed by the eye products, I was so, so happy that the face products turned out to be as great as I was expecting them to be. Actually better, because I was not expecting a lot from the bronzer and I was very, very happy with it. So. I think these two products are great and I think I'll be using them a lot. So all of the remaining products from this collection are actually lip products, which is pretty typical. <laughs> Another product that I was surprised by was this guy here. So this is the Crystal Glaze Gloss and it is in the shade number one wish. This is an ultra moisturizing pearly clear gloss in a jar that transforms any lip color with a glossy shimmery shine. I did try this on kind of on its own and didn't really look super great <laughs> just on its own, but I did like the texture of this. Uh, let me put a little bit more on. I am wearing the Raja lipstick right now. To add any extra like little, I think it added a little bit of shine. I do like it. You can see it's kind of like a gold and then maybe like a little bit of a pink pearl in here. So it kind of comes, gives off, like especially on camera, it looks like very kind of pink. But when you look up in person, it looks a little more iridescent. So I actually really do like this product because of the other three products that are similar in the collection. So let's go ahead and start talking about these. These of course are the MAC Lip Glass Lip Glosses. 
lip glass, lip gloss. Yes, lip glass, lip glass, lip glosses. So this comes in three shades. They are all inspired, of course, by Aladdin. The limited edition gloss in three shades that create a glass-like finish or subtle sheen. Designed to be worn on its own over lip pencil or lipstick, it's the perfect product for creating shine that lasts. It is pigmented, very shiny, and can impart subtle or dramatic color. We have the shades Magic Carpet Ride, a light pink with pink pearl diamond in the rough, gold with gold and pink pearl, and jewels on jewels, warm pink with gold shimmer. Now I think this is probably my favorite packaging because the design is not only on the cap but also just continues all the way down on the bottle of the lip gloss. I think these are really, really pretty. And I think the, the variety of shades are really nice. So I was originally, I was wearing Raja lipstick with the diamond in the rough lip gloss on top of it, which is the, the more gold sheen one. I think they're all really pretty. I think Diamond in the Rough I like best, followed by probably Jewels on Jewels, just because it has the most pigment. And I think it would look really pretty just over, you know, on its own or with a lip, you know, with a lip liner. Um, so I do like these. However, I don't care for the MAC lip gloss formula. For me, I find the lip gloss formula to be just a little bit thick and I wouldn't say necessarily sticky because there are some lip glosses that like they feel like they're gluing your lips together and you're just like and you can't even talk because they're just so sticky. These feel more just thick. They feel kind of thick and goopy. That's kind of how I would describe the lip glass for me. It's just a little thick and a little gloopy and I don't love the texture or the feel of these even though they provide a really gorgeous, like they're high shine and they actually have like kind of like little glitter particles in them. On the other hand, the Crystal Gloss, this provides like a similar look, especially if you compare it to Magic Carpet Ride, which is like kind of a pink pearl. I think these two are actually very similar, but I prefer the texture of the, the the lip glaze. So now the last four products that we have, of course, are the MAC lipsticks. So the limited edition lipstick in two textures and four hues from natural beige to bright pink. The iconic product that made MAC famous, transformed and specially designed, opulent packaging inspired by the rich patterns and vibrant hues of Agraba. So for this collection, we do have the shades Friend Like Me, which is a cool neutral beige in a cream formula. Princess Incognito, a neutral pinky rose in a matte formula. Whole New World, a bright blue pink in a matte formula. And finally, Raja, a muted red berry in a matte formula. I really enjoy these. <laughs> I do think, I think these lipsticks are really great and I quite enjoyed the range of colors. Of course, the Friend Like Me shade is not my personal cup of tea. I don't think I look good in a really light pinky nude. It just doesn't work well with my skin tone. It just blends into nothing. But the other three shades I think were actually really beautiful and I was pleasantly surprised by A Whole New World. I did not think that that bright pink was going to look good in any stretch of the imagination. I was like, okay, I don't know why they keep throwing this bright pink in there. Because like ColourPop did the same thing. Like the Jasmine shade in that ColourPop Princess collection was this really super bright pink. And I was like, I don't get it. But I was surprised on me that that shade actually looked kind of nice. Like I actually really enjoyed that shade. Of course, my two favorites are going to be Princess Incognito. Uh, I really, really do love this shade. I think it's beautiful. It's the perfect kind of neutral rosy pink, which would be kind of my go-to shade for like an everyday kind of look. So I really did enjoy this. And then the shade that I am wearing throughout this whole video, of course, is Raja, which I very, very much like. Obviously, MAC is known for their lipsticks, and I really am enjoying them, and I think these were a nice, fun addition to the collection, which I normally don't say. Like, usually my my sticking point with most like special collections is like there are too many lip products. While I felt like this collection would, you know, be fine with or without the lip glasses, I really did enjoy the lipsticks. So that is actually everything from this collection. And overall, I think I have to say I am most pleased, most excited about the lipsticks as well as the bronzer and the highlighter. Uh, these are really, I think, the standout products. Uh, the eyeshadow palette, mm, it was fine. I. I, it wasn't my favorite. I felt like it was kind of letting me down as far as MAC quality. 
you know how I feel about the other lip products. The pigment was nice, but I was just mad that they only put in a special packaging and charged more money. And the eyeliner, and yeah, it didn't, it didn't feel so great. So <laughs> overall, I feel about this collection kind of the way I feel about all of the Disney live action remakes. I love them in theory because they are Disney. But when it actually comes down to it, in execution, they tend to fall short and end up just disappointing, which this collection sort of did. For me personally, I felt like this collection was very hit or miss. For the average non-Disney fanatic consumer, I don't know that anything in this collection is super necessary. Once again, I will say it over and over and over again when it comes to themed collections. They are a marketing cash grab that is designed to capture people who are interested in a certain or a particular IP. I love Disney. Aladdin and Jasmine are some of my favorite Disney characters. I love the original Aladdin movie, so for me, getting this collection was not about what the makeup products really were, because I still will love the collection just because it's based on Aladdin and Disney, but it's not necessary, and to be a wise consumer, you should be aware that that's what you're buying. The reason they can charge two extra dollars for this exact same pigment that they already have in their line is because it's in an Aladdin box. And while I'm mad at it, I still bought it. So if you wanna pick up just pieces here or there, I don't think that's a bad thing. Find the pieces that you really, really love. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It lets me know you liked it so I can keep doing these kinds of like large collection reviews. And if you have not yet subscribed, my one wish from the genie would be that you would hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'll be notified every single time that I upload a new video. I hope your day is fantastic wherever you are and filled with lots of wonderful Disney magic. I will see you guys next time. Bye.